we all have stuff that are leftovers or things that we don't need anymore or want. And we've got three different pathways to take care of this around here. I'm Emily Hackman. I'm the store director here at the Depot Outlet. Everything comes here to the depot from people who have cleaned out their homes, their garages, their basements, their attics, and have decided to donate it to us so that it doesn't go to the landfill. Okay, at this station we are taking the donations and checking them for quality along with pricing them and cleaning them. We can kind of be the intake and then we can decide which direction it goes. This is Toby the Totbot. He seems pretty cool and powers up and does a lot of talking and dancing. Places like the Depot gives you the opportunity to buy silverware or, you know, servingware or... Clothes to kitchen items to household decor to furniture, books. I mean, you can find children's books here, adult books, any kind of literature you can think of. Artificial Christmas treat. Believe it or not, this is very recyclable. Weight-wise, this thing is almost all metal. The little, what would you call them, needles or whatever, they don't weigh nothing. You know, this will fluff off in the steel shredder. Wonderful stuff. Why waste a Christmas treat? My name's Mark Armstrong. My wife, Barbara Grant. We're in charge of sorting the books out here at the recycling center. And we started coming out just to look at books and take books home. And pretty soon Terry said he was looking for a couple of volunteers to go through books. And my wife and I love books. We love to read. And so what a perfect opportunity for us. Um, well, we will get our, our bulk paper in and we're gonna let it set and we're gonna see what it looks like for the day. And our guys are gonna make the judgment. What are we gonna do with this? Um, is this a suitable pack of paper to make egg cartons that are gonna return to our community? How are we gonna clean it up efficiently in order to deliver the most revenue back to the owners of this facility, which are the taxpayers? The overall main goal is to preserve the life of our landfill as much as you can. You know, a thing won't go on forever, but we need to extend it as far out into the future as we can and make sure nothing goes to waste in the meantime. The more recyclables that they take out, uh, the more uh, area we save here in time uh, here also. We only can build the landfill so big and we start out here and then every day we fill, we put in the uh, household garbage and you know every year we put in say 25,000 ton, then the next year we put in another 25,000 ton. Well that takes away from our airspace, from our big kind of hill that we're making. Uh, right now we have about 10 years uh, useful life left in our cell. Uh, if we can reduce uh, the amount of waste put in here by 10% per year, that gives us one extra year of life left on our uh, cell. That's uh, the, the simple way to explain it. This county is one of the greenest counties probably in the Midwest and uh, everybody sees it, realizes the benefit from it, but everybody yet knows in order to realize the benefit you have to pitch in and help and do the work. I think it has to be a community minded operation where everybody wants to do the, the right thing if you will instead of just taking things to the landfill. We're all in this together as part owners of these three pathways. It's in our best interest to use the right one. Everyone benefits from this place. Our community does, everybody that shops here, everybody that comes for a grant, everybody that donates, you are a small piece of a very large puzzle. And it's just a wonderful commitment from the community. I've never seen this kind of a commitment of, of recycling and, and volunteerism. So it's a wonderful thing, I think. <laughs>